if you have a diamond, Koinu diamond in the house, you will tell the whole world that I have a Koinu diamond in the house. You are supposed to keep it in a safe custody. We as a society have not come together and we have not stood for our own rights. Blaming some other community is not going to take us anywhere. We have to be strong and be united as Sikkimese and we have to now come together. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Karma Conversations. We are coming to you from Gantok. And Sikkim, as you know, a peaceful Himalayan state is in turmoil because of an observation made by the Supreme Court. Emotions are running high and we've even seen clashes between the ruling party members, that's the SKM and SDF, which is in the opposition. So what does it all mean? We'll try to break this down for the rest of the country and the world to understand. Joining me now on this show is uh, Senior Advocate Zorke, Zorge Namka to get you the legal aspect of what it is all about. Also joining me, Amrit Sharma. He's the core, uh, from the core youth team of the Joint Action Council, which is spearheading this movement. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Zorgi, explain to us, because I think many people are reacting, even in Sikkim, without even understanding the crux of this matter. So, in simple words, what has the Supreme Court done and what are the implications? As far as uh, Sikkimese is concerned, I'm a Sikkimese. Uh, I call myself a Sikkimese and then a Bhutia, secondly. In a similar manner, the Supreme Court's observation or what has been reflected in the judgment has caused a lot of anguish, pain uh, and emotion. Uh, what happens actually in the case is this. I think what we need to understand is what this case is all about and how did it come about. Okay? So what happens is any individual or a group of pa uh, people can approach any court. Right? You have the high court in a state and the Supreme Court. A party is free to approach the High Court or the Supreme Court, whichever the party thinks fit. So, in this case, the old settlers in the year 2013 had approached the Honorable Supreme Court with a writ petition. So, when a writ petition is filed, they make various authorities and the government as a respondent. So, and, and who are the old settlers? That is also an important point yeah. for the rest of the country to yeah. understand. Yeah. Uh, what has happened is, the old settlers of Sikkim, right, were the people who were living in Sikkim, right. Their forefathers were living and basically doing only business, right. They are the business community. The old settlers basically are the business community whose forefather had settled in Sikkim and various parts of Sikkim 15 years prior to 1961. 15 years prior to 1961. So, all these people. Right? All these people who subsequently were left behind, who did not choose to be a subject of Sikkim at that point of time, right? it is a group of people who comprises, who call themselves the old settlers of Sikkim. Uh, so, so, that defines the old settlers of Sikkim and mostly if we look at it, they are from say a state like Rajasthan and they have been here doing business and contributing uh, to the state in a big way. So, it is important to classify that. Now, uh, we were talking about the case. You were trying to tell us what happens and how the court works. See, a party approaches the Supreme Court. In this case, the old settlers approach the Supreme Court. Thereafter, they filed a writ petition right, in the Supreme Court. So, the Supreme Court thereafter hearing the parties issued notice to the concerned respondent. That is the Union of India, Government of India, State of Sikkim, the two affected parties and thereafter what happens is the party who is the respondent in the case comes before the Supreme Court files counter affidavit. Now, the counter affidavit of a state or the central government is supposed to say what the case is all about, whether they to agree to the party or not and if there is any 
anything in the writ petition which they do not agree, they will have to specifically state it in the counter affidavit. Now, in this case, Karma, initially the association of old settlers along with seven respondents, seven individuals who also form part of that old settlers had approached the Supreme Court and thereafter had filed a writ petition. Of course, we all know what the old writ petition contained. Mm. Of course, they talked about people coming from here, people coming from there. Of course, which uh, to us is a very, very sentimental issue, right? And thereafter, realizing that they had made a mistake, subsequently filed the amended writ petition before the Honorable Supreme Court. In this case, I must also clarify that one of the respondent had also withdrew herself from the case for some reason that is best known to her. Mm. She had withdrawn from the case and her name was deleted by the Supreme Court by the order dated 2-8-2013. So, 2-8-2013 she had deleted her name. In the same order, the Supreme Court allowed the amendment petition of the old settlers of Sikkim to amend their writ petition, they wanted to delete certain offensive languages that they had used. So, the Supreme Court allowed the old settlers to delete the name, to delete the name of the uh, petition number 8 and also to strike out the offensive words that they had used as far as the Sikkim and Sikkimese people are concerned. So, they had deleted, the Supreme Court had allowed and they had filed the amended writ petition. Thereafter, as per the record, this is all Honorable Supreme Court's record and what we must also understand is subsequently, there is a second group of people who had also approached the Honorable Supreme Court and their writ petition was registered as writ petition civil number 1283 of 2021. So, who were this group of people? We can discuss it subsequently. They are, they are group of people. They are around 63 individuals mm. had also approached the Honorable Supreme Court and this matter was tagged together. The counter affidavit was filed by the state respondent. Respondent, the government of Sikkim, what we are concerned about is the government of Sikkim filed its counter affidavit on 30 11 2013. Mm. So, what we had to refute, what we had to talk about, what we had to mention, what we had to say as far as the writ petition is concerned, the government had already taken a stand and they had filed a counter affidavit to the writ petition on 30 11 2013. Hmm. So, more or less the pleadings are complete and karma what we must understand also the layman must understand is this, we can only argue in the court what we have pleaded in our writ petition and what we have pleaded in the counter affidavit. If it is a civil case, of course, what the evidences are, what the parties have mm. adduced as an evidence. So, only this written mm. facts are taken into consideration by the Honorable Supreme Court. I must also clarify here that in the amended writ petition, they have deleted all the offensive words, languages, sentences that they had used in the old writ petition and that was allowed and that was deleted. So, this issue should not have been there. And is, is, it, um, uh, is it okay to talk about those words which were there, which you are calling offensive? What were those words at that point? Do we have a sense of what those words were which were deleted? Of course, uh, I uh, have uh, uh, read the repetition and at that point of time and in fact, I had brought this uh, to the notice of the uh, the the people in the uh, association also that this was very very offensive. Uh, they talk about uh, one of our brothers and community people coming from a uh, certain foreign uh, nation, right, and uh, calling them as uh, uh, immigrants, right, and uh, they have said that we have come from some other place and we uh, also fall on the same category. Mm. Unfortunately, I do not know how uh, the judgment reflects that uh, despite the fact that it was amended and these words were deleted. Okay, so these words were deleted. Now, uh, if you go back at the, uh, to the case, the case is very simple. They were seeking relief from paying income tax. Income tax. That's the sole 
case, the petition that was there uh, in the Supreme Court. Now, because of that, again, so how did those words, the immigrant word, uh, referring to one community, come about if it was already deleted? Uh, Karma, see, as far as uh, Sikkim is concerned, we all know Bhutia, Lepcha, Nepali, and of course the Bepari who subsequently came and settled, did business. They did wonderful for themselves. They've earned money. They've uh, made a lot of wealth, right? And we welcome them, right? They are our brothers also. But at that point of time, in the year 2013, these things were written in the writ petition, which hurt us. In fact, we had confronted them also. I had personally met few of their representative. Not only for that, in fact, their prayers were, if I don't get it, they should not be given also. That was one of their prayers, mm -hmm. which subsequently was struck, struck down. Mm. By the same order, it was struck down. Mm. So they said, if these categories of people are given exemption, we also fall under the same category. So if I don't get it, theirs also should be struck down which was a negative prayer. The entire writ petition was negative. Right? You are asking somebody, if I don't get it, he should not also get it. Mm. So that was very, very offensive. Right. Uh, so, so that brings us to the question of uh, you know, all the anger. So how do you look at Amrit, the larger implications of this? It's an observation, we all agree. It doesn't change who we are. It does not change what we do. Uh, we will, our passports will not be taken overnight. Huh? But what are the larger implications that you are scared of? I think the main issue is that the national media especially has only focused on this foreign attack. The anger in Sikkim is no, was, to begin with, was the foreign attack. But now is the larger implications of this verdict. The very fact that this verdict has been read with right to equality and nullifying the term Sikkimese is has what brought people to the streets because they feel that this dilutes Article 371F, which we consider our mini constitution, and that this will lead to further dilution of our rights, which we have seen getting diluted over the years. So now people are literally coming to say, no, stop it now. That is the anger. Because this has happened over time, it's an erosion. So people are saying, enough is enough. We cannot take this. This is the last, like, you know, the last straw on the camel's back, you know, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. How will it lead to further dilution of Article 371F? Uh, because there's a, there, the, uh, Jorge can uh, tell me if this is correct or not, because, but the fear is that now if this, if this is given for tax exemption, let's say, tomorrow right of, right of equality can be brought to all other aspects of Sikkimi's, Sikkimi's life, right? For example, our land laws, uh, you know, government reservation, seat reservation, Sangha seat, you know, like the many other things in which we are not equal compared to the rest of India. So if this is read in one instance, and it's a Supreme Court verdict, it can be brought tomorrow to be read in any other instance. And Jodhia can correct me Do if I'm right that? or wrong. See, Karma, nobody can take what I am. I'm a Sikkimist. I'm a born Sikkimist, right? And I'm very proud of that. Of course, similarly, we all are, all, are, all Sikkimists are. That is why it pains when a highest institution writes some, something that is very, very, what to say, offensive to certain community. And this has nothing to do if we say, if you go into the history of the case or the history of Sikkim, it has nothing to do with the case itself because they had already deleted what they say. And as per the record, it is deleted, right? So once it is deleted, means it should not have been reflected in the judgment, yeah. even one way or the other, yeah. right? So I think, Karma, what is important is this. And I must tell all the viewers that we must be aware of our history. We must be aware of the history of this case also and the old settlers also at the same time. Yes, but when the highest um, court of the land, which is the Supreme Court, says that there's no such thing as Sikkimese indirectly, hmm, which is reflected in the judgment, is it dangerous? Oh, for me, uh, as far as legal aspect is concerned, I must correct. Uh, it does not say Sikkimis. What it says is this, right? Uh, it is ultra-virus. The explanation of the term Sikkimis is ultra-virus only because it ignores and left behind the old settlers. 
even though they should have been given exemption. That is why karma, I think history is very, very important. Whether, whether they were left behind or it was some other cause that resulted in this is very, very important. Explain ultravirus. Basically, ultravirus is something, uh, let us say in this case, right? What the Honorable Supreme Court has observed is, because they also fall in the same category, what the old settlers have said is that, look, our forefathers came and settled here. We were from Sikkim, right? We were already Indian citizen. We did not take the Sikkimist citizenship. In 1975, when Sikkim became a part of India, there was no need for us to enroll in the Sikkim subject register because we were already Indian citizen. We had not given up our citizen. Huh. So that is why we were left behind. And thereafter, when the Income Tax Act, uh, all this uh, extension and all came about, we were left behind. Hmm. So karma, history is very important, like I said. So what has happened in this is, what is important is, in 1948, we go back to the history. In the year 1948, okay, we had the Income Tax Manual. Hmm. In Sikkim, hmm. all people who were doing business or some other service were taxed equally, irrespective of the fact whether you were a Sikkimist, not a Sikkim subject, because six, 61 Mamata hmm. Akon Sikkim subject, hmm. or you were a citizen of India who had come and settled and doing business in India, they were taxed hmm. at the same time, hmm. right? Thereafter, Sikkim, we have 1961 ko Sikkim subject mm. regulation. Mm. And of course, the rule followed. And the Chogel of Sikkim gave a choice to everybody to be enrolled and become a Sikkimese. It was a freedom given to everybody. Mm. Of course, we have business communities, prominent business community who are enrolled in the Sikkim subject because they chose to be the subject of Chogel at that point of time in 1961. It was given to everybody. Only condition was, in 1961, when the uh, regulation came about, you had to be settled in Sikkim and living there for the last 15 years prior to 61. Mm. That was the only condition mm. that I saw. Mm. Or you must have been born there. Mm. That, supposing you were a citizen of some other country, you had to forego that citizenship. citizenship. So there was no dual citizenship. There was no dual citizenship. Hmm. That nobody allows, hmm. right? So 61 came about, 61 came about. Thereafter, we know all know what happened. 73, the agreement. Thereafter, 75, the 36th Amendment Act. We became a state of India. Hmm. And then we know 371F, okay? Thereafter, Citizenship Act was extended hmm. in on... That is 21 June 1975, Citizenship Act of 1955 was extended to Sikkim, hmm. right? Thereafter, in 1981, hmm. because Sikkim subject co register was closed, so in order to give further identity, so what they chose was the government came out with a notification, the government of Sikkim, after central government's consultation, came out with a notification where the DC could issue the certificate of identification. identification. Yeah. Okay, so certificate of identification was given to certain categories of people. Okay, thereafter you had, then it came about, petition was moved because they were left out people, right? If you are aware, I think Amrit must be aware, because certain people, section of the people were left behind, they, the, they made hue and cry and the state government moved the Lok Sabha, the central government heard our cry. cry and thereafter committee was constituted, even a committee was constituted and why they ordered dated 1992 orders, 1990 and 91, mm. we all know seven, around 74,000 people plus people were included in that register, right? Mm -hmm. That is 74. Now in, th that was in 19, uh, not 74, that was in 1991. Okay. 
91. Similarly, the old settlers could have done the same thing. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. Right? The choice was given to them in 61. They did not take it. Thereafter, 73, 74, 75, and subsequently in 1990, 91, they did not take it. Thereafter, karma, thereafter, what had happened is income tax was extended to Sikkim yes. in 1989. Hmm. Yet nothing happened. Hmm. It was not implemented for one reason or the other. Then we all know what happened. The Joint Action Committee came into uh, action and uh, the government proposed that it should be given to all people in Sikkim. So a middle path with the central government was found. What was the middle path? Is people who were listed in the Sikkim subject register. Thereafter, the CUI holders and group of people were given exemption. That is in the year 2008, Vide and an Amendment Act was brought, an mm. Amendment Act was brought into the Income Tax Act of 1961 and they added 10.26 AAA clause, 26 AAA clause was added to Section 10 of the Income Tax Act and that is where exemption was granted to certain categories of people. And they were left out. Now, okay. In this category of people, the old settlers did not feature. Hmm. So that is where the entire mudda is all about. Uh, Amrit, do you think that this is getting too politicized and should not get so politicized? Yes, completely. I think this is a larger issue of Sikkimese identity. And at this time, I think because, see, from the day this issue has come out, I've been on the ground, I've been talking to people across the state. I think people really feel that the politicians should come together now. This was the time when they should have come together and thought about our future. Because like I said, this, this kind of erosions have kept happening. This is not one instance. For me, this one word, it is not going to change anything. There have been many erosions to the old laws in Sikkim over the years. And none of the politicians have come to uh, check them. This is the time that they could have come together and said, let's come together and let's fight for Sikkimese. And also, I wanted to add to what uh, Jorge was saying. There's also this, uh, this, uh, there's an anger on the streets also because, like, like the old settlers said, they were so patriotic that they did not want to give up Indian citizenship mm. when we were taking up Sikkimi citizenship, mm. right? Now, and uh, and they were given many chances to take this citizenship, and every time they ignored mm. th their chances. Now, only when they have to pay income tax, do they want to claim Sikkimese identity. Mm. They never wanted to claim Sikkimese identity before. Mm. This is only not to pay income tax. So if you are so patriotic that you wanted to always keep your Indian identity, why, do you not, why are you not patriotic enough to pay taxes? Every citizen in India pays taxes, right? Your patriotism also, paying taxes is also a way of showing your patriotism. Right. And I pay taxes, mm. staying away from Sikkim. Mm. Uh, so, so it's okay. Uh, technically, it changes nothing. Right. Mm. Technically, uh, if you look at mm. it. Our rights, we have our rights. We have our Article 371F intact. Yes. Uh, we have our uh, COI, Sikkim mm. subject certificates. We can get jobs here. We are still exempt from uh, income tax. Technically, nothing changes except the hit to the sentiment of the people. Apart from the... Apart from that, is there any fear at all legally? Uh, legally, what no. Uh, Karma, what I fear is that uh, this is a Supreme Court judgment, right? And of course, the judgments are binding on all courts below, right? Uh, what is there is you have all sorts of people in a society. Somebody might just misuse this judgment, just the phrase that has been used. It is the judgment, the judges also, the justices in the Honorable Supreme Court have used this phrase from the old repetition, if I'm not wrong, if I, if I read the judgment correctly, because this was talked about in the old repetition. Nowhere in the new repetition it is talked about, the amended repetition. Okay. More importantly is what we were talking about is, uh, as a society, we need to stay calm. Of course, our sentiment has been hurt, right? But this is the right time to channelize all energy towards a certain goal and not break back between ourselves. This is not a political fight. This is the fight of an identity. 
right? And when we are fighting for identity, we do not care about party politics, right? All that needs to be focused energy is what the government is going to do. We should come all come forward. What the joint JAC is going to do, we should come forward and help JAC. The government was approached the Honorable Supreme Court with a review petition. Our entire energy should be channelized there. Politics and political thing is before the election. You, the all mm -hmm. party political parties have the freedom to do it, right? But what is more important is karma. This where, where I fear most. You know where I fear most. Now after this judgment has come, right? Of course. We are happy for business community, the old settlers of Sikkim. Now the fear is, I fear the babus sitting down in the office. How they are going to interpret this and put it in the amended act. Because 1026 triple A, what the Supreme Court says is ultra virus because it does not add this fourth category of people that is old settlers of Sikkim. Now, if the legislature brings this out the fourth category right what we have already misrepresenting what we have already seen in sikkim is this sikkim subject left out in the communities thani old settlers mm. and the 61 they came 15 years prior only mm. and all their ancestors we only yeah, descendants descendants only abu yeah i'm not sikkim magic key on sony top office with anos any babu 75 on the already only matter it is not 75 mm. it is 61 they came 15 years, years prior Mm. That is 49 or something mm. like mm. that. 1949. Mm. Please remember all the Babu sitting in the office. It is 1949. And thereafter, their descendants. Mm. All these people are similar to us. Mm. As far as Sikhmis is concerned. That they also belong to this place. Of course, the rights. I have my own right. Mm. Amrit has his own mm. right. Right. This is where my fear is. No, And this is the fear on the street as well. Because uh, to explain to people, uh, the old settlers also got something called a residency, uh, residential certificate, which has now been rampantly misused. Because we've already seen that happening in the past. Now, once this verdict comes, what kind of misuse is going to happen? We do not know. And that fear is what is looming on the streets today. Absolutely. And do you see that there is, you know, there is an undercurrent playing mm. out uh, outside, mm. you know? that the certain rights and privileges belonging, uh, which belong to the people of Sikkim, mm. need to slowly be diluted. diluted. There is a thought. Mm. There are a group of people who are working hard. Mm. And at this point, if the people of Sikkim do not come together mm. and speak out, and it's a fear that slowly, the word that you use, um, erosion, mm. that mm. erosion will take place. Is that the true fear? Do you see that? Yes, I absolutely agree. And how do you counter? So, for me, I'm telling you, this verdict has been a blessing in disguise. Because we had been silent for so long as a society, we were not speaking up for our rights. We had our rights. Our politicians, our babus were slowly diluting our rights, but we never spoke up. Because of this one issue, we have finally spoken up. And now we must not stop speaking. We have to demand our rights. Our rights have been given to us. They have been given to us in the Constitution. But they've been diluted in the state. But why are the Sikkimis so divided? Oh, I think there's a lot of money at play, politics at play, many factors at play. But there was a time for that also. You know, we are a very young democracy in Sikkim. There was a time for that. Now I think we're slowly maturing. And I hope this is, you know, we're going to see a new kind of democracy in the future. So what are we seeing outside? Uh, you know, if you're uh, uh, living in the rest of the country, all you're seeing is uh, the... SKM party, SGF party fighting with each other. Uh, you are seeing various press conferences. Uh, we are not seeing a joint effort. We are not seeing the people of Sikkim mm, exactly. uh, on the street. You know, exactly. uh, People outside get really confused mm. because there are so many heads talking. Mm. There's not a single body that's saying, okay, mm. we are together. Mm. Uh, like in the case of, say, Ladakh. Mm. Uh, you know, or even in certain instances when it came to Nagaland, Nagaland. the opposition, the government, everybody came mm. together. But why is this not happening in Sikkim then? What do we lack? I think we're getting to a consensus where we might have a leadership in the coming days. But so far, that everybody's acting on their own interests. Nobody is really speaking for Sikkimis for right now. And I think that's why, you see, even for the government, or even government or other political parties to come together to see what is happening, required a joint action council to come together and say, this is what is happening. And this is what, you, what we want you to speak for. 
So they were kind of clueless. Mm. And there's a lot of blame game going on, Zorge. Uh, why didn't the SDF government not see this? They had several chances uh, to petition or to have their word in the Supreme Court. Then the SKM government came. Why didn't the SKM government uh, see it coming? Is it so easy? Karma, this is actually addition of what our history is all about. We've never started a job. We've started a job, but we've never finished it to a certain conclusion. That is what we society are. That is what our society is. Kam chalau, right? Kam chalau. Like Amrit was just pointing out to you about residential certificate. What is the need of residential certificate? There's no need of residential certificate. Of course, political parties and the politician have their own agenda. Right? Apart from that, there is a bureaucratic system also. Mm. It is the duty of this Babu who sits in the office to explain to the politicians, look, this is required or not, this is not required. Now the entire interpretation of the resident certificate has been now siphoned away. All that they do is, Mera 75 Banda Agari cut off. Mo 75 Banda Agari Akon Sikima. Whereas, it was not that. The entire case about the old settlers themselves, the old settlers of Sikkim themselves have stated in the petition, it is reflected in the Honorable Supreme Court's order that they have been resident, their forefathers have been resident or they have been resident 15 years prior to 1961. That is why they equate along with us. Mm. Right? Mm. But Yaki Udasa, like he said, RC, as mm. you mm. know, office of the by RC, you mm. mm. This is how our rights had been diluted. It is not only the responsibility of the political party and the leaders. Of course, they, whoever is in the chair, have a major responsibility, right? From 2013 to 2019, mm. it was the SDF government, mm. right? Thereafter, it was the SKM government, mm. right? Now, this is not a time to blame each other. Mm. It is the time to come together. But karma, I think people of Sikkim have now finally woken up from the slumber. We have now seen a, 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 what to say, a joint effort. At least the people are coming forward. Mm. Of course, political parties will do their own brick batting. Mm. But where we feel happy, why we feel happy is there's a joint action council, mm. right? In which there are people from all walks of life, including political parties, people also. Mm. But they have shared their political figure as of now, and then they have come forward in one forum. And the government has also supported that mm. forum. Of course, that's a welcome gesture, mm. right, from the government. And I'm sure even the opposition political parties will also come into line. Now, that is one positive. It is time that we wake up. Mm. And then do not sleep again, because all these things have to be written. I will just read a paragraph from the judgment, right? This is what the judgment says. Mm. It talks about, it, nowadays nobody can hide anything from public, mm. right? Our old settlers, they filed a case as an association of old settlers. Now, who are these people behind the old settlers? Mm. The Supreme Court acts on 4th of April 2018. This is paragraph 18, page 53 of the judgment. On 4th of April 2018, an order was passed by this court directing the petitioners in writ petition number 59 of 2013 to place on record a list of persons who are claiming benefit of section 1026 AAA of the Income Tax Act. And the state of Sikkim was further directed to verify the claims and cooperate with the central government so that such claims could be considered by the central government in accordance with law. Para 19. Following this order, the state government approved the state government approved two other categories. This is in 2018. Mm. Eh? Your 2018 mm. approved two other categories of person to be included for exemption from payment of income tax, including the petitioner. Including the petitioner, those having CUI on the basis of their father being a government service on or before 31st of December 1969. Mm. Right? And who are permanently settled residing in the state of Sikkim. So, this is the one category. Mm. Your old settlers already boyo. Your second category, here add state government. 
as what this is what the judgment says. Third category, right? And third, along with persons who had been issued CUI on the basis of landed property in rural areas in Sikkim. Now, as far as I am concerned, I have a little bit of a problem with this third category, that is, person who had, mm -hmm. uh, had been issued CUI on the basis of landed property in rural areas. Because there was a case of false CUI. Yeah. Right? I do not know what uh, on what uh, basis. basis and what context the government at that point of time. And this was done in after the 4th April order 2018. This was done by the dated when 22nd of September 2018. Hmm. Land Revenue Department did this. So I asked the people who are sitting in the Land Revenue Department at that point of time, the secretary, principal secretary, chief principal secretary, all those people, on what basis was this? Right now, as far as category first is concerned, all settlers by Alio plus CY, mm -hmm. whose fathers were being working in the government servant before 31st of December 1961 69. Junche second writ petition that is writ petition 3120 of 2021. Mm -hmm. These people are the ones who had filed the second writ petition, mm -hmm. this category of people. Mm -hmm whose father was working in the government of Sikkim prior to 31st of December 2000, 1969. Hmm. They filed writ petition 1283 of 2021. So that is that is 63 number of people. Hmm. Now, what I fear, Karma, is that about, we've seen this. Our babus are not at all serious. Whether they will check, verify, whether these are 63 people who had gone to the Supreme Court and given exemption, whether 400 plus old settlers are the same people who have been given exemption and their children. Mm. If that is the case, then it ends with them, mm. right? Mm. But if it is a case like RC, mm. then it will be misused. Then the question of erosion of our rights, mm. exemption will come into action. Why did this income tax in the first place come into act being extended mm. in the state of Sikkim? Because of some people sitting in the high chair at that point of time in the year 1980s, early 90s, giving donations, accepting mm. money from Bombay, yeah. giving mm. donations, donation. That is mm. why it was extended, yes. right? Mm. We we were the culprit the for gift, this erosion. The, the mm. gift scam. The yeah. gift scam. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Right. We cannot mm. blame anybody. It was we mm. we allowed this. Now, if we do mm. not, if we're not cautious, if our Babus do not pay attention. Mm. No, also Karma, we do not have proper records of who the other people are, right? These the right now is like talking about a mystery figure. If there are only, like he said, if there's only 400 and 463 people, mm. we have no problem with that. Mm. We are very happy to get this 463 people. But tomorrow, this 463 can become 4 lakh 60, 63,000 also. Yes. And then they become majority. Yes, and, and, and as Zorge pointed out, uh, the words that are very cleverly uh, put into the judgment have mm. like future ramifications mm. and can slowly hit like in a river bank, erode uh, whatever little was being protected. And Sikkim, uh, as you know, is a very small state. Mm. You know, we, we, we are hardly a few lakh people and the land is also, it's like a speck mm. in the dust when it comes to the rest of India. Mm. Uh, what uh, uh, the, the fears are on the ground is that maybe tomorrow, uh, you know, the government of India will mm -hmm. come down and say, okay, we've done enough for you. Mm -hmm. Now these are the rights mm -hmm. that are not needed for you and take away everything. So that is the wider fear. No, or dilute them by widening our rights to more and more people. They don't need, see, taking away 371F is a very tough thing. But by diluting in this one, adding more and more people who are, yeah. who are allowed to these rights. Yeah, who are allowed to these rights. Exactly. But they did mm -hmm. it. They did, yeah. No, karma, I don't fear somebody going to take it away, mm -hmm. right? No. I fear that small fight between, our, between ourselves, mm. <coughs> every little issue, we come to the street or nowadays Facebook, mm. mobile camera mm. and 371F. Mm. What treasure that we have, mm. if you have a diamond, Koinu diamond in the house, you will tell the whole world that I have a Koinu diamond in the house. You're supposed to keep it in a safe custody, right? Keep quiet, uh -huh. enjoy right. it, uh -huh. right? And not every second day come to the street and 371 AM, mm -hmm. right? Oh. People are going to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. 
people are gonna start thinking about it. Why well, are they getting so much of? They they are already talking about it know. in the national forums. Mm. In the right national forums, they are already talking about these things. And right? I think they should also talk about if they are talking about it in the forum, national forum. They should also talk prior to seventy three, what Sikkim was. It was yeah exactly. And what was the agreement entered between the government of India and Sikkim at that point of time? Agreement is binding on both the parties, mm. right? Mm. This was not a gift given to the people of Sikkim, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. These these rights and privileges have been earned, by the way. Mm. We've lost, we lost our sovereignty, and and became Indian citizens and proud Indian citizens. I must say, proud Indian citizens. Nobody in Sikkim has ever said that we are not proud to be Indian. We've of been course. very proud Indians. We celebrate fifteen August like nowhere no, in the country. More grandly than anywhere else anywhere in the country. In the country. Right. Mm. A very important point that Jorge said, which I want to mm. you to uh, you to reflect on. You know that that we are patriotic, we mm. are proud Indians, mm. and that. The special privileges that we've gained mm. is not a gift, mm. huh? or rather, we earned it. Mm. Do you think that the youth of today that you are connected to, Amrit, and you talk to, know about this? Do yes. they feel very proudly that this is not something uh, that we are not Indians in a reservation in America, but this is something that we've not? Do they know this? I think a a generation ago they were had become slightly unaware. Now this generation with technology has become very aware. They have become very aware, and they have become aware for the right reasons, not for the. Wrong, I think the generation ago they were aware for the wrong reasons, just to claim the rights and privileges. Now this generation has learned the history of those rights and privileges, which was lacking. Right, and and what can you do in terms of spreading awareness about this? Uh, in case of connecting with more youth, you already uh, you know leading the youth in the Joint uh, Action Council. Yes. Uh, what will you do? So. I think a lot of people are mistaken that this Joint Action Council has been formed just for this verdict. Joint Action Council has a much longer vision. We want to really st stop this erosion now. So we are going to, to stop the dilution of all the old laws in Sikkim, and we are going to work as a lobby on whichever government comes into power, and say, please look after our rights. That is our larger game plan, because something needs to be done. We cannot sit back, sit back as society and depend on political parties and leaders and whoever. We have to come together. Right. One last point before I go. It's very easy to point a certain community as villains. Mm. You know, which is happening post this uh, observation. It's mm. already happening. What are your views on one community being now observed or looked at as villains? And people are already, you know, putting out, uh, you know, Facebook posts mm. on that regard. I think that that is go really going like stooping too low. All of this, like Jorge rightly said, has happened because we, as a society, have not come together, and we have not stood for our own rights. Blaming some other community is not going to take us anywhere. We have to be strong and be united as Sikkimese, and we have to now come together. Let's f stop targeting people. the The reason this has happened is that we we become weak as a society. First, let's. Build our society together, then point fingers at other people. There's no point uh, pointing fingers at anyone. Uh, Karma, if I can just put it this way, uh, it's the frustration that is coming out of our people. Mm. I don't think so. There is a anger towards any community, right? Mm. We live like brothers. Mm. I have Marwari friends, old settlers. We talk. We are like families. Most of the Marwari, these old settlers, I'm talking about, huh? mm. prior to 61 go kura gorik, 75 go mm. All these people are more Sikkimese than the local Sikkimese I'm talking about. They have more sentiment, if not more than me. They also have equal sentiments, yes. right? They are more Sikkimese. Yes. Right? We're not angry against mm. them. It's the anger is towards what has happened, towards the system, how this judgment has come about, and people who are responsible at that point of time. Right from starting from 2013, right? You have the state co additional AG, you have the state co advocate general. They are paid money. They are there to look into all this. Unfortunately, after uh, Justice Wongdi, we've not had any organic advocate general of our own. Now this is the consequence of that. That is what we are anger about. That is what it is angry. Anger is all about, right? Sikkim is a peace loving nation. We are proud to be Sikkimese and proud to be Indians. 
Sikkimese is our history. Nobody can wipe that history from us, right? But today, I'm an Indian. Nobody can wipe that away from me. All these rights, it's not a right, right? It's something that was there with the agreement that came along, right? Similar rights are there for other tribal societies. I'm, I'm sure you're aware of Northeast, there are tribal yes. societies. In Bengal also, tribal lands are there which cannot be sold to other communities. Mm -hmm. All these are there in various parts of the country. So I'm not worried about that. All I'm worried about is whether this momentum of oneness will continue further in stopping this erosion once and for all. And my request and humble request to all the politicians is let us come together. At this point juncture, we have to support the government, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Because the government is our mouthpiece. No, the that... government is going to take things matter to the central government. Now, court matter is one thing. The, behind the scene, maneuvering as far as the government of India is concerned, government of Sikkim is concerned, it is the government who is going to do it. So, we will have to come behind the government. What happens we will afterwards, you can see in the 2024 election. Yes, no, that I agree. I think... We really have to back the government. This anti-government stance is not going to take us anywhere. Yes. And finally, at the centre, uh, at the Supreme Court, is the present ruling government, which will be heard most well. Uh, with that, uh, we come to the end of this talk. Thank you, Zorgi. Thank you, Amrit, for clarifying. Uh, it's very important to really understand the issue before uh, you react on anything. Yes, we know that emotions are running high right now. But do look at the fine print. And one of the important messages that I carry forward from this talk is that there is erosion, yes, to the rights and privileges of the fellow Sikkimese. And only time will tell whether the Sikkimese will have prevented such an erosion by coming together as a strong and a united community. Thanks for watching.